is November 1st and we are out for the evening sit. And the reason I call it D-Day is because we are going after the buck that I call Dynamite. I figure this is my best chance to catch him on his feet in daylight. So I have set up as close as possible to his bedding area. I'm doing it today because once we hit peak right, you don't know where he could be. He could be five miles west of here. You never know. I hung this stand yesterday, planning to get aggressive on Halloween. Problem was yesterday was a southwest wind. And where I think he bets is northeast of this stand. I decided not to hunt it last night, but I got in here early this morning, saw a few bucks. And also saw a doe that was coming back to bed. She picked up my wind because my wind started to shift out of the west and started to go down that creek bottom. So after seeing that, I was like, I'm gonna back out. I'll come back in early for the evening sit. This is right around the best time in Halloween to get on a buck that you know of in an area. I did have pictures of him chasing a doe on the 27th. You know, it's Sunday, so I gotta go back to work tomorrow and Tuesday, but I'm taking vacation Wednesday and Thursday. Dynamite's really the only buck in this area that I'm really excited about, other than the new buck that just started showing up TNT. Um, I call him GNT because he has the same characteristics as Dynamite. He's got flyers off his G2s. Dynamite only has one, but this buck has two, and he got some blipper out times. It's a beautiful buck. As long as our wind can stay out of the northwest and stay down out of this gully, I think things will shape up for a really good evening. To say I'm optimistic that I'll see Dynamite would be a lie. He's a mature buck. My chances are slim. But I do think I'm putting myself in one of the most opportune spots. A couple of our buddies from Pennsylvania are going to be on this, this this week, and if I don't get it, I hope that I would I would be jacked for one of them to get it. I mean, that would spoil any hunter.
I did not get a chance to do a conclusion video for that hunt. I'd be around the entire time. Didn't see dynamite, saw the buck I called TNT with two does up in that bean field. And I didn't want to rattle because I knew it was a big buck and typically mature bucks don't respond to rattling. I don't like trying to rattle one in, especially if they're with a doe, because I, I get worried that it pushes the doe away. But I gave it 15 minutes because he walked over the top of the bean field. I couldn't see him anymore. And I rattled and he came right back over the top. He crashed down through the timber. Thought he was just taking a weird route, but he was gonna come right down to me. I was getting ready. And uh, he just kept going straight through the timber, which I've never seen that because he definitely responded to the rattle. Because right after I hit those horns, that's when he came running. But he wasn't spooked. He just took a weird route. The closest I think he was was 60 yards. So either way, it was an awesome sit. Had some great uh, encounters with some other bucks. When that buck came down behind that doe and did that snort wheeze, ooh, that was awesome. The video came to capture how awesome it was in person. Gonna be working Monday, Tuesday. And uh, then it's gonna be rutcation. morning because i'm going way back in on a bedding area while the temps are really warm the next cold front isn't supposed to be moving through until uh tuesday of the next week regardless deer are still going to be on their feet those are still going to be in heat and you're not going to get an opportunity at one if you're not out there our buddy andy from pennsylvania filled his tag on the buck i called tnt he's been holding off trying to get a nice buck in pennsylvania it's a lot tougher than it is in iowa so it's awesome to see him get not only get a nice buck but a really nice iowa buck so I'm gonna get going in, it's a long walk. Sun comes up in about an hour, but we should be settled in pretty good.
Shit. I need to calm down. All right, here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna calm down and I'm gonna recap the entire situation. I'm a little bit more calm right now. Okay, I wanna recap what's happened. So I move my stand, set it up right here. It's on a perfect spot. It's got open timber, bedding, and the CRP. And so it's a transition between the three. At 12.15, I heard some fighting up here right to the north of me. 10 minutes passes, I grunt, nothing. I thought I heard some like little ruffling back here. I looked around, couldn't see anything. It's hard to see into this bedding area behind me. So five minutes later, I decided to rattle. There wasn't any immediate response, but all of a sudden I heard crunch, crunch. And I looked behind me and there was a soccer right behind me at 30 yards walking away from me out of the bedding area. And I could see exactly what he was doing. My wind switched from the south and it was now blowing out of the east. And he swung up around. I ranged that tree at 60 yards and I saw it's where he was gonna stop at. He came right up to that tree at 60 yards. I put my bottom pin on him, been practicing at 60 yards for that only opportunity. Did the whole rant thing. He stopped. I took the shot. He dropped the shot. And unfortunately, because he dropped it, hit him in the spine, he got down that tree with my bow in hand as fast as anybody ever could and went and finished him off. That's the first time I've spined a deer and I feel awful about it. So if anything, you should use this example as why not to take 60 yard shots. I had my pin perfectly. I've been practicing. I'm pulling 70 pounds. I'm shooting light arrows. I'm getting a lot of speed. I had it right in the middle of his lungs, his vital area. And that sucker still dropped it and he, I spined him and I got lucky. I got very, very lucky. I'm very fortunate that I'm able to recover that deer and that I was able to put him out of his misery. You live and you learn and that's the lesson I'm gonna take away from it. I'm sorry the video wasn't there, but do-it-yourself filming is not easy. It's so crazy how that happened. When I shot him, he rolled down the bank, so I don't really know what he looks like. I know he's got a split, a split V2 on one side, and I can see that he had a broken brow tie on the other side. So we'll see what he looks like here. I don't know what was telling me. I don't know what was telling me to stay in the stand all day, but man, it's so worth it. This is what happens. That is just an unbelievable buck. My gosh, look at that. That's an amazing turn of events. I sat there for four hours this morning thinking about how I had an opportunity at a big buck. And then this guy came in and presented an opportunity and I wasn't gonna let it go. This one was for Aunt Karen, that's for sure. I know she's looking down from above and uh, that's just awesome. An old warrior right here. Sorry about the first shot, buddy. Did not mean to do that. If you'd have stayed still, it would have been a lot easier, but hey. So we were able to make it happen pretty quick, so. What a beautiful day. I gotta thank God. It's just been kind of a wild ride this year. Basically came to this farm that I've been hunting for a while, but I only hunt it during the rut. Don't really run trail cameras hard because it's just really a good bedding area. It's hard to ambush during the, you know, early October. I don't think I've got any pictures of this guy. If I do, I would be pretty sure I would recognize him for sure. But yeah, when he walked out, it was no doubt shooter, so. But you can tell he's a fighter, but the way he was acting, I mean, he was no dummy. I mean, this wasn't his first rodeo. He was getting downwind. I had to, you know, do something pretty quickly. Wasn't able to get the camera on him. I'm not even concerned about that right now because I've had too many opportunities, especially last year. There was one full-blown opportunity at a buck just this size or bigger that I missed out on because I was too worried about trying to get the kill on film. When you're doing it yourself filming, you gotta accept the fact that there's gonna be times that you're not gonna get the kill on film. And if you want to get the kill on film, then you're just going to have to accept that, you know, there's going to be some times that you're going to lose opportunities. I wasn't going to let that happen with this guy, and I really wasn't going to let that happen this year. I didn't really want to take a 60-yard shot, but I knew that was my only option. He had just gotten directly downwind to me. He wasn't going to stick around long. One of the big reasons I don't like shooting 60 yards is because of what, exactly what happened. I put my pin on him, but the uncertainty of how the deer is going to react between the time the arrow leaves the bow and the time it hits the animal is just is scary and that's what he did he dropped the shot and i spined him we got a lot of work with him.
right, so what's about to happen here is I never told my dad that I ended up shooting one. So I'm about to roll up right now for the camp. I think this is gonna be a pretty good surprise. He has no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get 